Man, got around. OG7 back here. And today, of all days, I'm going to have some fascinating tales of victory and glory demonstrated through stories and allegories that help you to understand the few strong and dedicated men that band together can do all things, man. Because when one or more are gathered together for positive unity, mountains can be moved. Hey guys, I want to first and foremost say uh, this is going to be a long video. for those. So for those of you, man, who don't like when I rant and I rave, skip along, little doggy, and then go ahead and unsubscribe, dude, because I'm getting so tired of your little childish comments. I can't wait till I move out of this country, dude. Like, I'm packing up all my stuff so that I can take it with me, the, the, the stuff that's allowed in these countries, so I can take it with me so I can go ahead and get my hunt on. Because, you know, I try to share with you guys hunting's important, but, you know, you guys got your own agendas in life or your own beliefs. Say, hey, God bless you, Allah bless you, may Buddha bless you, or whatever, whoever you believe in, man. But I just wanted to first and foremost say, man, I wanted to give a shout out to uh, Hard Body Training Don over his YouTube videos, man. He, he trains every day, man. Dude's a savage. And, uh, hey, dude, I appreciate your grind. Keep doing what you're doing, man. And I wanted to give a shout-out to Drew. Hey, man, I'm, uh, this is my second movie I'm working on, Drew, and I got four more to go, man, before I leave this country. They want me to do seven, but there's there's no way, dude. There's just no way. It's already November, and then December, January, I'm gone, man. So uh, I got love for you. I'm praying for you, man. I wish you a speedy recovery from all your treatments. But guys, I want to get straight to the topic of today's video, which is, in maximum security prison, there are no days off from the tyranny of gang violence and the terror from their bullying. So I wanted to, first and foremost, man, I wanted to share a definition with you guys so you can understand the intensity of this video today because it's very important because I'm going to share a lot of things that you know, I've been noticing, man, like, I've been trying to do, like, more positive stuff. I do these morning motivational quotes, which is stoicism, which I think really helps you become a warrior. And, uh, you know, I know in the past I've told some, I've, I've embellished some stories and I've lied, but I got caught. And, you know, I paid for it, man. But a lot of you guys, man, act like you never told a lie before or you're just so righteous. So please unsubscribe because I notice whenever I put positive stuff on my channel, like motivational Morning motivational stuff, dude. It's quotes of stoicism, um, nocturnal, um, what's the word called? Pred predictive programming to help your subconscious. You know, positive things. You guys just unsubscribe and grow. Like I've noticed, dude, I keep hitting 40K and I dip back down to 38, up and down. So please, please, if you're soft and wimpy and weak, dude, and you just want some darkness, you want to be a a cell soldier and a troll, fucking please unsubscribe, bro. I don't need your fucking subscription count, bro. I don't need your views. I don't need none of that because, dude, I'm circling myself with positive people. I don't need negative people. So please, just everybody that's soft and weak, bro, you don't want to hear the truth. You're a young dude with your thumb in your culo and you can't take the truth, then unsubscribe and don't even watch my channel, man. Fuck you, man. For the rest of you guys, like, bear with me because, dude, I'm moving to a foreign country, bro. And I'm going to do nothing but positivity and congruence. Congruence just means, like, if you, I'm just going to make this up, guys, so follow me. If you say that you're a vegan, and a vegan is a person that doesn't eat animal products at all, no milk, no cheese, no eggs, nothing, and then, dude, you're slipping up going to McDonald's, man, and eating a cheeseburger, I'm not judging you, bro, but you're not congruent, see, because you know what? You can lie to everybody else. You can't lie to yourself, bro. And one thing I've, I've uh, decided when I moved to Vegas, I'm not lying to anybody. And most importantly, I'm not lying to myself. So every day I live in a congruent way. And that's why I'm moving to this third world country because I can no longer tolerate these phony ass fucking laws and bills and you soft motherfuckers letting women think that they're equal and stronger and better than you, bro. I'm not going to even get into the, I'm not going to even get into all this political stuff. Yeah. 
They have a right to go to school, which they're going to school more than you guys. They have a right to vote, which they vote more than you guys, bro. They have a right to work, which they work more than you guys. Their women are starting more of their own businesses than men, bro. But, man, physically, bro, and mentally and emotionally, dude, they're stronger than me? Get the fuck out of here, bro. If, if they're so fucking strong, why do we have male sports and female sports? Why is that? No, just follow me. I don't, I don't want to hear your fucking stupid-ass rhetorical uh, rationalization. Oh, you know, this and that. Man, look here, bro. There used to be segregation of races, bro. They had, like, black sports and then white sports, bro. And then I think the civil, serv- uh, civil rights came out. Just follow me, you dumb fucks. There used to be segregation. It was, like, black sports leagues and white sports leagues. They weren't mixing together. Then... Um, I think it's the civil rights came out, bro. Equal rights. So now on, on, on all sports teams, you got black, white, Mexican, Asian, Filipino, Chinese, Russian, whatever, whatever it is, bro. Peruvian, Indian, Pakistani, bro. Because everybody's equal. So if you guys here in America, in these westernized countries, you want to live under this facade that everybody's fucking equal, then do just have just sports, bro. And then all this, just have the fucking MMA, just to win, and whatever, who's ever 145 pounds, get in the fucking cage, bro. And then here, more importantly, you guys quit taking these women out on dates, paying for them, bro. Like, when I hang out with my homies, they ain't paying for shit. Everybody, the, the bill comes, everybody's putting in their fucking tally, bro. You guys, man, make me sick. You let these women lit this facade like they're equal and better than you, and yet you still kiss their ass and bow down to them and treat them like they're special snowflakes. Get the fuck out of here. I'm so, I can't wait to leave. But anyway, enough of that, man. So I wanted to share with you, man, the definition that we're going to talk about today. So the first definition is terror. Terror is a state of intense or overwhelming fear. Violence, number two. Violence or the threat of violence used as a weapon of intimidation or coercion. Especially violent and destructive acts such as bombing committed by groups in order to intimidate the population or government to granting their wills. And then here's, here's the third one. Very frightening or terrifying aspect. And here's the fourth one. Someone, someone or something that inspires fear. So here's the next definition I want to read to you guys. It's called tyranny, bro. What is tyranny? Arbitrary or unrestrained exercise of power, despotic abuse of authority to government, or the rule of a tyrant or absolute ruler, a state ruled by a tyrant or absolute ruler, oppressive or unjustified, severe government on the part of any ruler. Here's the one I like. A ruler who has no legal limits on his or her power by law or constitution. A ruler who exercises total power harshly or cruelly. A person who uses authority or power harshly. So this goes into what I'm trying to say here. In maximum security prison, there are no days off from the gang violence, tyranny, and the terror of bullying, bro. And I want to I want to share this with you, bro. I want to share this with you. I want to get it off my chest, man. You know what I mean? Because, um... I personally live like I'm still in prison, bro. You see me with my my crossbow right there, dude. I I read this type of stuff. This is this is the Warriors man. I don't know if you can. Let me see if you can see it. There it is, right here. There's a the title. Can you see it? Um, I don't know if you can see it, man. Anyway, it's the Warrior skill level, man, by the Department of Army, and it helps you to put together crossbows and stuff like that it's an instruction manual dude it helps you to do all kind of stuff that keeps you trained as a as a military type dude so you can be like self-sufficient and the reason that's important guys is this guys ever since i met david goggins and i told him about my past where i made up some stories and embellished some stuff and he's like bro everybody lies and tells stories anybody says they don't they're a fucking liar they're lying themselves what you do is don't no longer move it forward, no longer lie, bro, and live according to righteousness and virtue and truth. And just only associate with people who are on that path. So I'm trying to live a life of a hero, bro. The hero of a thousand faces. I got this book from Drew Guest, bro. 
And what that means is every day you get up, bro, and you live your life in such a way where you exercise, you practice martial arts, self-defense, you, uh, you read books to enlighten your brain and to help you to be able to walk with kings and converse with fools and to treat everybody the same, whether it's a giant, a woman, a little kitty cat, a baby, a soft person. You treat everybody the same. You don't change, bro. And that's the whole thing, man. So I live like that every day. Because, bro, when I was in prison, bro, the gangs, bro, it's, it's, prison is just overrun with gang. They're like cucarachas. They're like roaches, bro. That's the, the most terrifying part of prison is the gangs. It's just running rampant, bro. And, you know, the, the institutions don't do anything about it because I'm going to share something with you, bro. There's some foreign countries like the one I'm going to. I'm not going to tell you guys where I'm going, but the one I'm going to. They have laws against gangs, bro. This is how it works in other countries. If the other countries suspect you of being a gang member, bro, they'll arrest you, bring you in for interrogation, and they'll let you know, hey, look here, man. We hear that you're a gang member. We want to tell you in this country, gangs are outlawed. So then we're letting you know because maybe you're ignorant, you're stupid, you don't read the news, whatever the fuck. We're letting you know. If you're dressed like a gang member or you're associated with people that we think are gang members, we're going to gun you down in the street or we're going to lock you up for the rest of your life. Bro, that's why these other countries don't have the gang violence we have, bro. In America, the fucking gangsters and the gangs got more rights than the fucking the victims, bro. It's fucking retarded. And here's the reason I had to make this video, guys. Like I said, I personally live like I'm still in, in, in prison with no days off for me. But now what I do now, man, instead of like when I was in prison, bro, I ran every day. I did martial arts every day, bro. I, I fucking lifted weights every day. I did calisthenics every day. I mean, I was, I was fucking, I had claustrophobia. So I had to find a way to deal with my my innate energy as a, as a human being. We have this innate energy to move. That's why when you, when you don't move, that's why they say if you don't use it, you lose it. Human beings aren't meant to be caged like animals. That's why when you go to the zoo and you see these wild animals caged up, they don't look happy, bro. And when you're caged up in prison, you got all this innate energy. So I just was exercise. I exercise, man. I don't want to. I don't wanna exaggerate, but I know for a fact I was exercising at least eight hours a day. I was gonna say sixteen hours a day because there's sixteen waking hours in a day. But then you know I'm trying to be more um, conservative with my my stories and reliving what I did. So you know what I mean. I'm going to say eight, but I know it was more than eight, but I'm going to say eight just to keep me, you know, congruent and consistent. And then I read a lot of books, bro. But now what I do is um, I rotate my workouts between, you know, one day I'll do a bunch of stretching like David Goggins. You know, David Goggins stretches for about four hours a day. I'll try to get in about a good two hours. You know what I mean? I'm not at four hours yet. And then I, I, I combine that with yoga. And then I do my martial arts, whether I'm doing Muay Thai or kickboxing, dude, or um, Kempo Karate or Commando Krav Maga. I just kind of rotate it, rotate that on a different day. And then I do light weight training on, on another day. So just so you follow me, one day is all stretching yoga type stuff, dude, my, my hip therapy st type stuff. The next day is like light martial arts, whether it's Muay Thai or kickboxing or karate or boxing or... You know, some combat art, dude. I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm not doing no more foo-foo shit, bro. I'm striking and punching. I'm getting striked and punched. And then the next day after that, I do some light weight training with some calisthenics to as a therapeutic type of a thing. So now you got this Keys to the Kingdom of OG Silverbacks um, program. So I rotate like that, dude, every day, bro. Because when I was trying to do it all in one day, I kept getting the, the macaroni because I'm older and my immune system can't, rec it's all about recuperation in your central nervous system, right? So anyway, I, I train like that because, guys, I, I just want to be serious with you. I got to let you know, and I'm, I'm so happy I'm leaving here because, dude, once I leave, this is, this is what I like about moving to a new place. And I want to share this with you when I moved to Vegas, bro. So when I was in California, I got very comfortable. I had been there 30 years. I knew I'm not going to say all because that's stupid, but I know I knew most of the gang members, black, Mexican, uh, border brother, Asian, Russian, white boys. I knew all most of the gang members in Cali because I've been in I've been, I went to five different prisons in my 10 years in maximum security prison. Plus, when I was a street pharmaceutical guy, I was up and down the state. Bro, 
Listen to me, fellas. Dude, Vato, I have no fear, man. I go into any, any city I want, any country I want, because let me tell you something, bro. And I'm not bragging and I'm not trying to be I'm hard. Only the good almighty Lord know when it's my day to go, not man. So if I go into a foreign country and I get kidnapped and tortured and murdered and eaten by some cannibals, that was my time. But I'm not going to sit here in fear and be like, oh, man, I'm not going to Brazil because they kidnapped American men. Oh, man, I'm not going to Vietnam because they kidnap Americans, man. Oh, man, I ain't going to the Philippines because they eat, they eat Americans. Oh, man, I ain't going to Colombia, man. Fuck that, bro. I go where the fuck I want. Whatever's going to happen, bro. They're going to have to take it, bro. Like, this. <laughs> whoever is a cannibal or they capture me or whatever, bro. They better be a savage-ass motherfucker because I train every day, and that's what I'm going to tell you about in this video, man. A motherfucker coming to get this, bro. You're going to have to take it because I ain't give, I ain't going to be no victim, bro. I ain't going out like a biatch. So if you that motherfucker, then bring it, bro. So anyway, bro, I've been all over California and all the worst hoods because I'm trying to expand my territory, bro. And then plus sometimes when you go to these martial arts tournaments, they're in some questionable neighborhoods. Or when you're taking these martial arts certification boot camps, they're in some questionable neighborhoods. Because if you're really a martial artist, a warrior, and a savage, bro, you're not looking for smoke. You don't want no smoke. But if you're trying to be congruent on your path, and then the dragon pops up, and you're supposed to go from point A to point B, and the dragon's in your way, bro, you don't turn around and go back to you and go, hey, man, hey, uh, Little chimpanzee, why you back? Hey, you know, I was on the path, like you gave me your orders, you know? And, um, dude, I was walking, and this, uh, this big-ass dragon popped up. And the king's like, and? Well, um, you know, like, hey, man, um, you know, I wasn't prepared for that. And the king's like, you're a fucking warrior? Um, yeah, when, when everything, the plans line up, I got my homies with me, and things are perfect, then I'm a bad motherfucker. Oh, okay, bro, get the fuck out of here. Off with his head, man. So that's all I'm saying, bro. So I've been all over California, and I got kind of comfortable because, I mean, most of the martial arts community knew me. Most of the prison community knew me. Most of the military community knew me. So I got really comfortable, man, and then I was trying to help youngsters, and I got comfortable, and I'm, I'm making up these, like I'm Superman making up all these super-duper stories and shit, bro, just trying to be larger than life because I felt very comfortable, right? So let me share something with you. When you move to a new city, bro, you don't know anybody, bro. There's two things you have to determine. Like, hey, do I want to mess with righteous cats, man, that are doing positive shit? Or do I want to continue having questionable behavior? Because in California, I had a lot of questionable friends. I knew some savages. I knew some jackers. I knew some kidnappers. I knew some questionable people. Let me tell you this really quick, man. Yeah, I'm fucking ranting. So unsubscribe, you soft fucker. Hey, man, I used to date business executives because I was an IT executive, so I would date business executives because some women are enamored when you got money and power and status. And they kept pressing me like, hey, you know, and my name wasn't OG Silverback. I ain't going to tell you my name. And for those of you who don't know it, you ain't meant to know it. And for those of you who do know it, you know, you, you, you do too much. Hey, you got too much free time on your fucking hands. So anyway, these other business executive females would be pressing me. Oh, you're an awesome guy. I like your presentation. I like your, I want to hang out with him. I'm like, nah, you don't, you don't want to hang out with me after work. I'm a different dude because I got duplicitous behavior. Like, I'm like Superman and Clark Kent. I'm like Batman and Bruce Wayne. I'm that type of motherfucker, right? So they pressing and they're hot and sexy, bro. So I'm like, okay. So then as they get to know me, you know, back then I, I was, uh, I was a dumb fuck, bro, even though I was doing PUA. That's why I say PUA is for soft motherfuckers. Because PUA, bro, you do all this approaching and sarging and uh, taking women out on dates so you can smash them, you know, one day late, two late, three day late. Get the fuck out of here. So I was taking women on dates, right, on a date. I don't do that shit no more. So whether we going to the movies or dinner or we going to the opera or the ballet or a play or, you know, um, California's got a lot of open air concerts and just stuff like that, open air um, festivals. Hey, dude, it'd be a lot of gangsters and gang members and questionable murder type dudes who beat their murder raps and kidnappers and torture and cannibals just walking around, man. They just, California's got a plethora of criminals. So, you know, I don't, I don't care whether the lady was Caucasian or Asian or Indian 
or even African American or Hispanic. There's some square people in every race. So you know they're like, and so then the the the, the, the gangsters is coming up to me. You know what I'm saying? And I, I ain't gonna say my name, but they was like, "Hey, what's been going on, my man? It's been a long time." So look at my face, guys. This is them. Hey, man, what's been going on, my man? It's a long time. These are big, menacing, imposing dudes, right? Right. <laughs> These are big, menacing, imposing dudes, right? So I got my business suit on and everything, and I got my glasses, you know, and I'm in character for this lady. I'm like, hey, man, how you been doing? What's been happening? Like, man, you different from back in the day. I said, oh, you know, well, people can change. Like, well, you know what, man? You dressing pretty nice, and she's looking pretty good, man. I would say I hang with you. And I'd be like, hey, my man, don't let the glasses fool you. I'm that same motherfucker that you knew back then, dude. I'm just with this little kitty cat. And I'm trying to get her to relax so I can go up in her viscous innards. But don't get it twisted, my man. Because we can do some funky shit right here, right now. And then the dude be like, and it might be a group of dudes. They'd be like, okay, my man, I'm just testing to see if you still can grow. And all right, dog, good to see you. Oh, okay, Vato. All right on, dude. All right on, brother. And then they leave. So then this woman's like, Oh, my God, how do you know people like that? I felt a very dark energy from him. And I tell her, man, I know all kind of questionable people. Well, how is that? I said, man, you know what? I got a very colorful past. And then the lady would, the fucking lady would ghost me, bro. Like she wouldn't, you know, this is before the word ghosting came out. I don't know how long that was, but I just heard about it last year. Anyway, man, she would block my number and then and, 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 and unfriend me on Facebook and all this fucking shit. And I'm like, get the fuck out of here. You're not the right woman for me because I know some interesting cats. But then when I moved to Vegas, bro, I said to myself, bro, and it's funny, man. My first my first two weeks I moved to Vegas, I ran, I met David Goggins, man. And I hit him up because uh, I said it was, I said it was book away because I'm, I'm moving. He's got five books, actually. And I hit him up. I was like, hey, man, I, I read your books and all that, man, and everything. And, you know, I've, I've done some questionable stuff in the past, and I've told stories. He said, hey, man, check it out, man. I'm trying to work out right now, man, but let me tell you how it works, man. If you ever lied to anybody, bro, you apologize. And once you apologize, move the fuck on. Because those who won't forgive you, fuck them. And those who act like they never lied, they're fucking liars. You move on, and you just you be on a path of righteousness and never look back. So after I talked to him, I just had to talk to myself. I was like, you know what, man, from now on, bro, I'm telling nothing but the truth, whole truth, nothing but the truth. And 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 those who don't like it, you're not of my ilk. You're not of my tribe, right? So anyway, I'm sharing that with you because, dude, I just, all the people I hang out with are righteous, savages, warriors, bro. Like, we don't practice this deceitful being somebody else or trying to pick on people, like, picking on smaller people to make you look bigger. And this goes into the topic of what I want to talk about, man. Because I want to tell you something, man. When I was in maximum security prison, the gang members never take took a day off from robbing people, bro. Graping people, bro. Extortion and bullying, bro. Like, there was no days off. There was no days. Like, yesterday, I think, was Halloween or whatever. I don't know. I don't follow paganistic holidays, bro. But anyway, dude, you know, like I noticed around Thanksgiving and Christmas, man, you know, I haven't been back east in a while. I've been, I mean, I've flown back east a few times to visit family members and stuff, but I didn't really, it's, it's one thing to visit somewhere, it's another thing to live there, but I haven't lived there in a while because I don't like the vibe, man. Nothing against you East Coast people. I'm, I was, I, I, I grew up there, but I, I like a more West Coast vibe. So anyway, bro, hey, man, when you, when you, when you in prison, bro, they, there's no days off. Like, it ain't no, like, I noticed around November, December in California, that's what I'm speaking about, people all of a sudden get this, you know, brotherly love thing. You know what I mean? Like, oh, man, shelter the homeless and feed the homeless, and they're giving you money. Oh, God bless you. And you need blankets. And I remember when I, I remember when I first got out of prison, bro, I never forget this, man. I never forget this. It was in the winter. <laughs> it was It was in the winter of 1999 bro and so it was all this you know prince had a song out 2000 zero, zero party over is out of town you know what i mean and everybody's like oh when the year 2000 hits the end of the world and the chaos and i just came out of the belly of the beast for 10 years bro and i just was down in the 
I was just down in L.A., man, uh, downtown L.A. with the savages. Let me tell you about downtown L.A. really quick. So I paroled from Chino, California, because I met I met a couple of Dr. Dre's bodyguards who were in prison for life. This is what I want to tell you youngsters, man, that you guys don't understand this, man. Some of these rap dudes, yeah, they're, they're put on a false persona and all this stuff, and they playing gangster. But let me tell you what happens with gangster rap. I don't know about other rap. There's some real gangsters in that genre, in that ilk, in that environment. And so you portraying that you're a gangster, but then you're going to have to pay tribute to the gangs for real. So you got some gangsters on your payroll, man. And so that's what happened to Tupac. You you playing this role, and you associate with the beast is real gangsters. So let me tell you what happened, man. A couple of Dr. Dre's bodyguards are in prison for life, for smoking some. Like, you guys don't know... Everything ain't on worldwide hip hop. There's some shit going on in the rap game, bro. That's why I stay far away from Suge Knight and Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg and all them wanna be motherfucking gangsters, bro. I'm on the square path. So anyway, I met some of Dr. Dre's bodyguards is in prison for life. They was I met them in level four, maximum security. And uh they showed me pictures. I talked to Dr. Dre on the phone and shit. And I had a job interview to, to become one of his next bodyguards. Because I was a savage and I was still like not sure what I was going to do. So anyway, I, I paroled from Chino, which is in, uh, I think it's in, uh, I don't know what county it's in, but it's in Southern California. So they take me down to downtown LA, bro. So let me tell you about downtown LA. It's like, it's like downtown San Francisco or maybe downtown any big city. During the day, you got all kind of different business people and doing business commerce and all that. But at night, bro, it's like the movie Omega Man. All these still gates come down, sh -sh 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 lock up and everything. And then the zombies start coming out, man. The homeless people, the drug addicts, the disabled people, the mentally insane people. Here I am. I got my prison blues with my fucking. They gave me a back. They gave me a a, a little sack thing, like, you know, like a, a sack you carry stuff in. Because I I, I, they call me the monk in prison. I read a lot of books. So I'm carrying my shit. And I seen a lot of dudes I was in prison with, man. And I'm getting out. I had my gate money. I think they gave me uh I don't want to exaggerate, man. Let's just say I had two hundred dollars gate money. I don't remember. I don't think it was more than that, and I don't think it was less than that. So anyway, I'm walking, man. I'm walking through downtown LA. And the, the night the night falls, man. Darkness falls, and all the monsters and zombies is coming out. But I'm straight out the pen, homie. And there's some dudes I was in prison with that was now homeless and on crack or crystal meth or fentanyl, whatever the fuck they was on. And they saw me straight out the pen with my prison blues on, and every because I have a parole with pl prison blues because my family laid down on me. So I parole out. I'm walking down the street. I got my 200 on me. To me, that's a lot of money because in prison I'm making 10 cents a day. I ain't seen money in 10 years. So I'm walking down the street, and it's like, "Hey, my man, you just got out, didn't you, dog?" And I was like, "Yeah, what about it?" Well, I'm just saying you probably got your gate money. Everything you spare some change. I said, "I'll tell you what, I, I can spare your fucking life, bitch." Like, get the fuck out of here, man. I'll eat your bitch ass right here, nigga. Fuck. Oh, so I shouldn't say that. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, Negro, I'll eat your bitch ass right here, man. Fuck you, man. And then all the zombies back up. like, Because when a zombie realizes you're a lead zombie, they back up because they sniffing you. <laughs> see if you're human. But I was like, man, you better get the f I'm straight out of the pen, bro. Straight out the pen, bro. Like, I ain't been around people in 10 years, bro. I've been around savages, man. Whatever you want to do, homie. I'll rip your fucking head off. So anyway, I get to my hotel room and everything, and you're supposed to call your parole officer. So I call my parole officer. I, I think I paroled from Chino. I'm just going to make this. I think I paroled at uh, 11 in the morning, but by the time they dropped off everybody to the different location, I got to downtown L.A. It's about 7 at night. It started getting dark, you know, because it's wintertime. So I get to my hotel room and shit. Look. Uh, you know, you check into the hotel, you got to show your driver's license. I, I got my fucking, I got my prison ID, bro. So I, I paid for my room and everything. And so I called my parole officer, man. And I says, uh, he says, oh, you out? He said, yeah, you'll be back in. Don't worry. And I go, hey, I just want to let you know, man, I'm, I'm down here in Los Angeles. He said, Los Angeles? Hey, man, you supposed to be up here, man, in Monterey County, man. And I was like, no, nah, I got a job interview with Dr. Dre tomorrow morning, man. He going to interview me. He said, man, if you don't get your bitch ass up here, I'm going to violate your ass. So then, bro, I had, to fucking, I had to fucking leave the hotel room. I just paid for it, catch the Greyhound bus. 
they head back up north, and it took me like um, I don't know, it took me like sixteen hours, bro. I, I don't, I don't remember. Anyway, the, the moral of the story was like the dudes was still trying out there trying to jack people and all this. These was former gang members and all that, man. <laughs> and so what I'm trying to share with you, bro, in prison. The gang members, they don't take no days off. There ain't no, like, what I'm trying to say, And when I got out at the end of uh, 1999, when I got back up north. Oh, this is the word of the story I'm trying to tell you. When I got back up north, bro, the homeless shelters was overran because in the wintertime in, the, in, in California, it rains at night. It's really cold, like, you know what I mean? And so you don't want to be outside. You get sick. So then I, I couldn't get in a homeless shelter. So they had these churches, bro. Check it out. They got these churches. So now, just for the Christmas season, follow me. Christmas season, bro. They care for the homeless, and you can sleep in the church, and they'll cook for you, and you can shower, and they'll give you blankets and shit. But after January, motherfucker, they just walk by you like you're invisible. So I'm just trying to say, there's a shift in human kindness and compassion around Christmas and holidays. But with the gang members in prison, bro, there's no days off to the robbery, the graping, the tyranny, and the terror are they just bullying on people, bro? And this is what I wanted to tell you, bro. This is what I wanted. This is the, I'm going to wrap this video up for you. But I just wanted to tell you, man, you know, did you know that gangs are just a group of cowards, bro? Yeah. Gangs remind me of a fucking, I don't know if you've ever seen hyenas, man. You know what I mean? And, and these wild dogs in the wild, man. And I think even wolves run in packs, man. Wolves are cowards too, bro. I'm just saying because anytime you need a gang of some people to in, enforce your violence, bro, you're a coward, bro. And I'm going to tell you why. Just follow me, man. Just follow me. The reason I say that gangs are a group of cowards, here's what it goes back to my original statement. In maximum security prison, there are no days off from the tyranny and terror and the gang violence and the bullying. So let me share something with you, man. Most bullies, you guys don't know this, most bullies are cowards. And what they do, they're smart cowards. They pick on people that are smaller than them or weaker than them, bro, so they can appear stronger than what they are, right? Follow me. Because real savages, I know I know some real savages, man. They're the most mild-mannered, giving kind. You know why? Because they know in the back of their mind, man, if the shiza hits the fan, bro, I got some savagery for you. It's like if you watch the movie The King of New York, when he got robbed on the subway, these guys had knives and shit and baseball bats. And this motherfucker had a 9 millimeter, and he's just sitting there, dude. And he's like, yeah, man, break yourself, fool, give us your money and all that. And his girlfriend's like, oh, God, what are we going to do? And so then he opened up his jacket, man. He gave him a big wad of money, bro. He gave him a big wad of money. You should see that movie. And then they saw, they saw his strap, bro. He gave him, he said, hey, man, when you guys ready to make some real money, Come see me. So then they start working for him. But what I'm saying is he's all calm and cool because he's like, and when he reached for the money, he could have just pulled his strap out and smoked him. But he didn't because he's like, oh, man, he's just some little youngsters misguided, right? But here's what I want to say to you, man. The savages I know, bro, you don't have to pick on smaller, weaker people to make yourself feel like you're somebody. That shows me, man, that you're a soft coward, bro. You, like you got to pick on somebody smaller than you. To make you feel like you're somebody, do right? But follow me. Let me wrap this up. Here's what I want to share with you, bro. That's why I'm, all my homies tell me I was I was born in the wrong time. Because back in the old days, I want you to see that whether you see this movie called Troy or these uh, these other kind of movies. But check out here's here's the here's the narrative. You get all these armies converging together to fight, whether it's over Helena Troy or whatever it is, whoever land or whatever, right? So here's the kings. They get they ready to let all you young fucks die because the kings, bro, they just they're just old rich dudes, man. You know what I mean? They don't really be in the battle like you think they do in the movies. They just send you out to die, right? So check it out. <coughs> all these armies are hundreds of thousands of men. It's gonna be a bloody war, right? He even saw this in Game of Thrones. And I want to I want to address this to you gang members who are going to be making your little comments and shit. Oh, just sit back. We're going to come see you, man. You think you think we cowards and everything? We bro, we going to show you fool all that. Hey, dog, if I tell you went too you went too far, Holmes. All the late Holmes, you went too far, Holmes. We're going to come and see you, Vato. Hey, man, we are talking about my people. Fuck you, man, right? <coughs> Check this out. Back in the old days when the armies would converge to fight. 
This is what the kings would say to each other. The smart kings that loved their young soldiers and want them to die, they would say, hey, how about, man, we spare all these lives. You bring out your best warrior. Follow me, guys. You bring out your best warrior against my best warrior. And whoever wins, the army will surrender to that person and to that king. Hey, bro, that's some smart shit right there. So why is everybody, everybody got to fucking die, right? So follow me, man. You bring out your best warrior against my best warrior, right? Hey, I know what you're going to say. Oh, those are Kingsbury rules and all. Ain't no rules in prison. All I'm saying is I'm by myself. I'm a lone wolf. Let me tell you how I live, man. You got all these gangs running around terrorizing people, butt-graping people, extortion, bro, robbery, dude, all kind of fucking tyranny, bro. And I'm by myself. I ain't got nobody. And that's why I used to always go to the shot caller and I'd tell him like this, man. Hey, my man, like, I don't bother nobody, and I'm here to do my own time, man. And I got so much time, like, Father Time can't count it, so I ain't going nowhere. So I'm going to tell you what, man, if I can't live in peace and harmony, man, then I'd rather die a fucking glorious death. And you can go with me. <laughs> 